pleasure to be here. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak on this. Um, my position's actually probably been known by many in this room already, and as I've been working with Representative Grigsby and others in the legislature on uh, finding uh, uh, the solution uh, or a variety of solutions uh, that can help us move public education forward. Um, given the many, many challenges we've got here in the city of Milwaukee. And I just want to point, point out uh, the area that I represent in the uh, State Assembly is on the south side of Milwaukee, uh, roughly about a two and a half mile radius around the intersection of 27th and Oklahoma. We've got a, you know, a great number of schools, uh, both run uh, directly by MVS, and uh, I, I'm actually proud to say there's a variety of alternatives uh, that better suit student and parent needs, charter schools, and other uh, organizations that have partnered uh, with young people to provide them with uh, a quality education. And uh, I also happen to have gone to the public schools uh, my entire uh, uh, student life, as did every member of my family. And so um, I take great pride in being able to say that uh, uh, thanks to that public education, uh, myself, my oldest sister, and my late sister, who was born developmentally disabled, uh, were, able to, were able to reach our potential and, uh, and expand opportunities. I may take my comments short, because I know there's a lot of other people here from the community that took time out of their evening after uh, uh, a nice long uh, weekend uh, with family and friends for Thanksgiving, and so uh, I want to let them speak. Uh, I just want to point out that I have been literally amazed at the way and the speed and the, 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 the tone at which this entire uh, proposal uh, from both the governor and the mayor has taken shape in the last three months. I've never seen anything like it in the last seven plus give or take years in the legislature and it kind of makes me wonder if we had, had done this with some other uh, key important issues we may have averted some of the crisis. Having said uh, that we're in right now when it comes to public schools, having said that, stripping away the most basic fundamental right to vote uh, for your member of school board and to participate in democracy uh, to me is a step backward. And beyond the sort of electoral nature of, of some of these proposals, uh, I think that it has been an, an enormous and um, mistaken oversimplification to just simply say that somehow uh, changing administrative uh, or executive uh, level decision making is going to be this silver bullet to improve the performance in our school system. There was a chart by, um, you know, the, the daily paper here in town, you know, rarely speaks out on education issues and doesn't, you know, editorialize in when they cover the news. So that's great, and it seems to help their numbers, but um, there was a great chart that came out, one of, one of the few things that uh, Alan's written that I, that I could actually understand and appreciate, which is the, the, the last two years of uh, of enrollment numbers. I don't know if you saw that in Sunday's paper with the article uh, about the schools. There's a little chart that showed the last two years and how, um, and we have a lot of discussions about this in the legislature when we uh, discuss how to fund things in Milwaukee. And it showed the, the numbers that have been dropping for traditional MPS schools, um, other MPS uh, uh, classrooms, dropping with huge double-digit percentages, and the increase in voucher participation, the increase in Chapter 220, and the increase in use of open enrollment. In a nutshell, what we are doing is disproportionately layering on uh, heavier and heavier problems in the traditional sense of what we call the Milwaukee Public School District, and kids with engaged parents, kids with uh, some sort of game plan or other kinds of things going in their favor, uh, are choosing to go to other places. Now, if you're in that particular family or household or that student, you might find that to be uh, a good choice. And I respect that and I totally understand what motivation is and that's an important piece of this equation. The problem, a lot, uh, very similar to a lot of other public sector uh, uh, organizations that are overwhelmed in the city of Milwaukee, is that what we are done, what, what the result is, is we're left Taxpayers are left holding the bag, people who run the schools, people, teachers and other employees who are trying to work with these uh, uh, great kids uh, are left with bigger and heavier problems uh, while places with, that have far fewer re resource constraints 
um, are able uh, to essentially uh, uh, take uh, achieving, uh, higher achieving kids, and uh, that affects our numbers. And it affects our uh, <coughs> scores, and clearly is having a negative impact on the way we fund schools, something which, when I made my initial comment, uh, uh, tongue-in-cheek sarcasm at the beginning, if we had been with using this lightning speed to fix the state school uh, funding flaws and formulas that haven't been updated in seems like close to a century now, um, we would have far fewer problems on our hands in the city of Milwaukee. And if we dealt with things like, you know, the three highest triggers on costs, as you all know, are uh, kids who are coming from uh, some very troubled backgrounds and, and uh, neighborhoods with a lot of dysfunction, high poverty. We've got a lot of kids in special ed. I grew up with that experience, and so I'm aware of the high cost and the different nature of that. And lastly, increasingly in my neck of the woods, uh, English is a second language, which ends, up, which ends up costing more, but I think is also a long-term investment that uh, yields many, many benefits. My point in all of this is not to say that I defend the status quo in, some of the, in, in a lot of cases where we have some real serious performance issues. Um, my point is to say that there's a way to fix this and then there's a way uh, to kind of gloss over it, which is exactly what I think this mayoral takeover uh, proposal has uh, taken on this, this uh, sort of bizarre political life. Um, I'm happy to work with people on alternatives, compromises. Um, I don't think it's any uh, uh, secret that it's a real problem that I think, um, in my view, that you have, we have school board elections in the middle of dark, cold winter. Uh, when people say there's not a lot of turnout, uh, that usually is one of the first red flags that pops off in my head. Uh, I get elected in the fall, and I don't see why the superintendent of schools statewide or, or anybody sitting here shouldn't be elected in the fall time. Uh, it would increase citizen participation and, frankly, be cheaper for the taxpayers. Um, I, I firmly believe in having uh, uh, input from the city council and the mayor when it comes to picking a new superintendent and uh, helping set budget priorities. In that sense, we are all in this together because all of us are, uh, that are paying for the schools are also city property taxpayers, and as everyone knows, it's not actually the school district that levies that tax or bonds for money. It actually comes, it goes through the same similar process as uh, the way the city of Milwaukee finances things. And so, I, I would be interested in looking at some of those things um, as we move forward. Uh, I think this, this, this process has a, a long way to go, and I think we need to um, uh, get serious about how complex and complicated uh, the problems are and uh, take responsibility for that and work together instead of uh, the uh, continuous sort of partisan snickering or, or finger pointing that seems to be um, all too common in uh, these kind of debates in, in the Milwaukee area. So I appreciate your time, and um, I don't know, do I uh, pause for questions or do I run? Uh, you're up. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate your work.